Now when you start a blog, you have two options you can take advantage of. You can either use a free hosting platform or you can pay for your own hosting. Now both of these platforms have benefits in their own rights, but which one's better for you? I'm Michael with Writer Sanctuary and today we're going to talk about the free versus the paid platforms for WordPress hosting. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And also, I created a huge guide on writersanctuary.com's website for starting a blog and I'll leave that in the description down below. It covers the basics of everything you need to know from hosting all the way to the type of content you should create and how to monetize it. Now paying for your own hosting isn't all that expensive. In fact, my websites generate enough from AdSense revenue alone to pay their overhead. But I can see how having a free platform for blogging is attractive for a lot of people. So let's take a look at both of these. But the free blogging platforms, they give you a way to get started writing. Unfortunately, your domain name is also linked to the platform that you're going to use. So let's say that you start a blog called Bob's Meat Market. If you use WordPress.com, the free blogging platform, it'll say bobsmeatmarket.wordpress.com. Kind of a long address because you're creating a subdomain on WordPress's website. Now later on, you can upgrade and buy your domain outright and just use WordPress as your host. But another thing you want to consider is that a lot of free blogging platforms don't give you access to a lot of the root directories or installing the plugins that make WordPress so such an attractive tool. And there's guidelines about how you can monetize your blog. There's a lot of restrictions that you have to pay attention to when you're creating a blog on a free platform. Now when you pay for your own hosting, on the other hand, it's a whole different ballgame. Now paid hosting is ideal for those who want to take their blogging to a whole new level. So with a web host you have access to all of your root directories. You can control every aspect of your website and fine tune it as much as you want. You can monetize it however without worrying about stepping on toes of the host. Of course you have to be legal about it. But there's just far more things you can do with a paid hosting account as opposed to a free platform. This is aside from the fact that it's a lot easier to market a hosted account as opposed to a free one. For one thing, it makes it easier for people to type it in their address bar. And secondly, it shows a more professional atmosphere. Don't get me wrong, you can still be successful and do some great work on a free platform. But you're also going to be limited in what you can do. So how much does a paid platform cost? Now each web host is different when it comes to determining the price of how much hosting is. And some will offer huge discounts if you pay for in advance. Otherwise, hosting could range anywhere from $10 a month and up. For example, if you use greengeeks.com and you pay for three years in advance, it breaks down to $2.95 a month. So when you make your initial payment, you're only paying like $107. Now that's just the basic account on Green Geeks. You can expand it to go even further. And if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link to the Green Geeks website in the description down below. So here is where I tell you that it is an affiliate link and I do earn a commission off any sales I make. But what about an SSL? Now you can use free SSLs if you want to verify the domain name itself. However, if you're starting a blog for business, you might want to consider the paid SSL instead. This is because paid SSL certificates go deeper into the verification process regarding your website and your business. Now the free SSL only verifies the domain itself, which still works in most cases. Unless you're planning on building a really big business, kind of like Google or Nike or Apple, then you can probably just get away with the free SSL for now. Now the paid SSL runs about $40 a year depending on where you get it from. Like right now, I pay 40 bucks a year through my current web host. But how much does it cost to start your website on a web host? So if you use the Green Geeks hosted services, it'll be $107 for the entire three years if you don't get an SSL. And this breaks down to $35.67 a year, which is far cheaper than a lot of hosts that are out there. And if you decided to go with a paid SSL, it only knocks it up to 75 bucks a year, which is still half the price of what I pay. By the time my contract is over with my current web host, I'm definitely switching to Green Geeks. Not to mention the fact that I've got to play around a little bit with the Green Geek servers and the, their websites are relatively quick, especially in comparison to mine. So there you have it. It's uh, You can go free or you can go paid. It really depends on what you want to do. If you're trying to set up a personal blog or a portfolio or something just to get your name out there, then a free blog might be okay. But if you really want to expand what you can do with blogging and create a website that will attract an audience and clients and look professional, definitely think about a paid hosting plan. So even if you don't use Green Geeks and go somewhere else, you'll still want that web host so that you have control over everything. Personally, I don't like to be restricted, which is why I don't like using the uh, free platforms. 
So, do you have a blog? And if so, do you prefer the paid or the free versions? Leave in the comments down below. Personally, I'd rather have the paid hosting accounts. You get far more with the web hosting and have complete access to change whatever you want. But if you get a semi-popular blog going and you monetize it, the income alone from AdSense could easily pay for the overhead cost of your blog. Like right now, my websites generate about three to five times more per year than they cost me. Just imagine what will happen when I go to a cheaper server. If you find the video informative, hit the like button. If you want to learn more about freelance writing, WordPress, text broker, or anything else that I cover, hit the subscribe button. And be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this in the future. In a couple of days, I plan on doing a breakdown of how much it would cost to implement paid services on your blog and whether or not you should use them. Well, that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you tomorrow.